Today I'm showing you a full step-by-step -step guide of how to set up an FPV drone. How's it going guys? My name is Parker Shepard. I'm a professional FPV pilot and today I'm going to be showing you guys start to finish how to set up an FPV drone. So the drone that we have here is from iFlight. It is the Nazgul 5. Let me open it up here. Get your props that come in the box. You've got your antennas, um, some straps and some uh, propeller screws and stuff in that bag. You've got your GoPro mount and bolt in this bag. And here we have the drone itself. Let's see if we can get it off this foam. All right, so this is the drone itself. This is, like I said, the Nazgul 5. It is a five inch freestyle drone. It has the O3 air unit in it, which will connect to the DJI goggles too. If you guys have the old goggles, so like the V2 goggles or the V1 goggles, you're gonna wanna get a different air unit. This one can still pair with it, but um, I do find that some of the other air units tend to uh, connect better with the old goggles. This drone also has a crosshair receiver on it, so I'm gonna be using it with my Tango 2 controller, um, and that is the controller that I always recommend to people to use. I love that controller, super small, compact, and it's great, um, just all around connectivity, um, signal strength, it's just like a solid controller for flying FPV. And I'll link everything that I talk about in this video in the description. So if you guys are just getting into FPV and you're trying to figure out what to buy, you guys can just go through there and buy all of the gear that I list off. So I'll have a controller, goggles, drone, everything linked in the description. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna take out some of these tags that I don't need on it. Um, so I have these little tags like on the X-T60 right here. Don't need that tag. Um, just some of the safety stuff. So we're gonna take all of those off the drone. I'm gonna leave all these little tags that are on the motors um, just because they're showing me what direction the props are gonna go, which is important. So I'm going to leave those on until I actually get to put the props on. I'm also gonna take this battery strap off. I have some battery straps that I like a little bit better than these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that off because I put one of my own on there. But if you guys don't have your own, just leave these battery straps on. They'll still work great. Next up, I'm going to put my video antennas on that connect to the VTX. So those will go on here on the back and they come in this little bag here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out and they will just screw right on the back here. Okay, those are on. Now I'm gonna connect it to my goggles. So like I said, I'm using the DJI goggles too. So I'm gonna go ahead and power those up. And I'm gonna need to grab a LiPo real quick to plug into the drone to power it. Okay, so I've got a LiPo. We're gonna plug it into the drone. Drone's gonna turn on like that. All right, so now we have the drone powered on, we're gonna put it in binding mode. So the goggles, the binding button is right here between where you'd see through um, the little elements there. It's this little tiny button. It's gonna press and hold it and it should put it in binding mode. All right, so you just press and hold that. The goggles are now in binding mode. And now on the VTX, on the drone itself, there is a little button that's right above the LED. You're gonna press that and hold it and it's gonna bind. And now the drone should be bound to the goggles itself. We are bound and we're showing all of the information in the goggles. So the goggles are set up. We're gonna put the goggles aside for now because we're done with those. All right, so now we're gonna grab a controller and we're gonna to bind our controller to the drone. I recommend the TBS Tango 2. That's what I'm using in this video. Um, and it's also what I have been flying um, pretty much since I started flying FPV. I've tried a few others, but this just has been my favorite. So, and it's using Crossfire, like I said earlier. So um, we're gonna go ahead and bind that up with the drone. Okay, so to bind the controller, you're gonna to need to find your receiver that is on the drone itself. Um, mine is back here in the very back of the drone, and it does look like I may need to take this top plate off the drone to access it, but I'm going to try and see if I can reach the button first without having to take the top plate off. Okay, so I'm going to try to pull the receiver down a little bit in the drone, see if I can reach that button. Actually, I may not even need to press that button. Let me check. 
So sometimes on the on the drones, if it's a brand new receiver, um, it will already, once you plug it in, will already be in behind mode since it hasn't been bound to a controller yet. So I'm actually going to just plug it in real quick and double check that. And if it does automatically enter behind mode, I won't need to press that button. But if it has already been bound to a controller or it doesn't automatically bind, um, then you're going to want to go in and just do a quick press on that button and it'll enter into bind mode. So for the controller, you're gonna long press the menu button. You're gonna go down to the TBS agent light, click on that. Go Tango 2, and then you'll see Bind. So you'll just press Bind, and then hit Enter to execute. And then now when it starts flashing green, that means that it is now in binding mode. So let's plug in the drone. Let's see what that receiver does. And just like I thought, just like I expected, the receiver was already entering bind mode because it hasn't mounted anything yet because it's a brand new receiver. So it's automatically connecting to the controller now. And you'll know that it's in bind mode when the receiver starts flashing green. And then once it starts to connect to the controller, it'll start flashing red, and your controller will also start flashing blue down here on the bottom. So I'll say update nano receiver, hit enter to confirm, and now it's gonna update for a few seconds. Um, and then once it gets 100%, it's bound and updated. Okay, so that finished. We're gonna unplug it and do like a little reset. So I'm gonna turn the controller off, and then I'm gonna turn the controller back on. Welcome to Tango 2. And now I'm gonna connect the drone again. And sometimes it doesn't work in the first try, so right now it is entering bind mode again. It didn't bind the controller. So sometimes that'll happen where it'll fail. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just go back into the TBS agent light again, back to Tango 2, and I'll just run the bind again. Because I could see that the receiver itself was flashing green again. And you'll be able to tell whenever it's bound to the controller when the receiver on your drone is a solid green light. And then the light here on the controller is also a solid green light. So here it is, flashing red again. Next to the controller, bound. Okay, so now the receiver actually stopped flashing green. So that tells me that should be bound now. Um, I didn't have to do that whole binding process again. Sometimes it just kind of makes me plug it in and, uh, and do that. Like I'm gonna do the binding process again, but I think it just like solidifies the bind on it. So we're gonna go ahead and plug back in the drone. I unplugged it um, and turn back on the controller. And there it is. Now it is bound to the controller. So you'll see controller is green, light on the controller, and the light on the receiver is now green as well. So now that the drone is bound to the controller, we can now plug in the drone into the software called Betaflight, and I will leave a link in the description to where you can download this software. But you're going to need this software to kind of um, map out all your buttons and change all your settings on the drone itself with your controller. So we're gonna jump into that software now. And this drone connects through a USB-C cable. Um, some of them use a micro USB cable, um, but you'll be able to tell just by the port on the side which connector you'll need. Um, so with this one, it is USB-C. So we're gonna plug that into the computer and it should automatically open like it just did in beta flight. So this one actually powering the receiver. So what you plugged into is actually called your flight controller, it's your FC. Um, and so sometimes your FC doesn't always give power to your receiver and sometimes it does. If it doesn't give power to the receiver, just plug a battery in and then it will actually power the receiver as well. But I can see the receiver's on here, so I can tell that it's giving power to the receiver so I don't need to plug in a battery. Well. And it connects to the controller. So now we're gonna go in and we're going to set up all of our buttons. And so all of that is under the modes tab in Betaflight. And so you can see there's already some set up here. I'm just gonna go ahead and X out of all these because I know what my buttons um, that I wanna set up are. So the first one that I always set up is my arm button. Um, and so that's what actually turns on your drone to actually start giving power to the motors to start flying. So I always set that up as this button here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click add range and just set it to auto. And then you can see once you press that button that the little tab here goes all the way to the right. So you're just gonna wanna change this uh, slider so that it's in that range. So when you press that button, it's in the same range you have this slider set. And so now that means that whenever I press that button, it's going to arm my drone. So the next thing I like to set up is a pre-arm. So you're gonna scroll down and you'll see pre-arm down here. You're just gonna add another range. And I like to set that up as this little switch right here. So I had it set to auto again. You can see whenever you flip the switch up, it goes to the left here with that little tab. So I'm just gonna swipe this range over there. And so basically what that does is, this will actually arm the drone before I flip this switch. So I have to flip the switch to then be able to press this button to arm the drone. It just adds like an extra level of safety. So if you're like 
holding the drone or playing around with it, you don't actually bump that button and turn on the props whenever you're not ready to start flying. Next thing I'll set up is my beeper. And so my beeper, I'll usually set up on the same switch as my pre-arm switch. Um, I'll just set it as the opposite direction. So my pre-arm switch, I flipped up to pre-arm. I'm gonna have it flipped down for the beeper. And this just kind of helps you find the drone. If you happen to crash or lose it or something like that, you can flip the switch and it'll start beeping really loud so you can hear it. So I'm gonna add another range, switch down, change that range over to there so that it will activate whenever I flip that switch and it's good. And the other one that I'm going to add is my flip over after crash. I'm gonna add that to my left switch here. I'm gonna add it to when I switch, flip the switch down, it's gonna flip over after crash. I'm gonna add another range, auto, this down, move that range over. So now when I flip that, sw that switch down, it's gonna activate flip over after crash. So we're gonna save that down here in the bottom right corner. And that just saved all my settings. So now whenever I unplug the drone and put a battery into it, it's actually gonna do what I want it to do. Okay, now we're gonna go into receiver. And here, I'm just gonna check and make sure that all these stick movements, that how I have them mapped is actually making the drone do what I want it to do. So your left stick up and down is gonna give you throttle. To the right and left, it's gonna be your yaw, so that's gonna turn the drone. Right stick to the right, tilt it right and left, that's gonna be your roll. And then the right stick, pitch forward, pitch back. So again, all I'm doing is just checking to make sure that all of these are functioning properly and doing exactly what I want the drone to do, which it is. So that is all good, so I don't have to change anything there. Now say that was messed up, um, and say like, I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna mess it up real quick so that I can correct it for you. Okay, so I changed some of the settings and as you can see, it is now not doing what I want to do. What would be my throttle, which would be here, my left stick, is actually now my roll. So instead of giving me throttle, it's now just causing the drone to freak out and roll. And now what would have been my roll is now my throttle. So over here it has channel map. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna look at the, no the, the letters next to your roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle, and you're gonna see which ones are switched. So right here, my roll is switched with my throttle. And you can see that that would be A and T. So I'm gonna look at the channel map here and find A and T, and I'm just gonna swap them in the order. So instead of A, T, it's gonna be T, A. I'm gonna save that, update it. And now everything is back to normal. Everything is operating the way it should be. Okay, now the last thing you're gonna do is you're down to OSD, and this is basically what you're gonna see in your screen, in your goggles, whenever you're flying. So this is where you get all your information from the drone. So the one thing I like the most is to have my battery um, average cell voltage. So that's just gonna tell you like what each cell is at. Um, because whenever you're flying FPV, if you're flying a typical LiPo battery, you're gonna start at 4.2. And then as you start flying, it's gonna decrease. I usually try to land the drone around 3.6. Um, and then usually that equals out to once it lands, the voltage will kind of go back up a little bit because it's not drawing battery. It's not drawing power from the battery anymore. So it'll usually bump back up to 3.8, which is like the ideal storage voltage for the battery. So um, I like to see the individual cell voltages. And so that's what this is. So I'm going to make sure I have that set. So yeah, it just has, it has a bunch of other information in here. Um, I don't always look at all this information and you can add more in here if you want. Um, some people like to add their stick overlays, different stuff like that. If you do want to add anything, so say I get rid of um, my battery average cell voltage, or you want to add it if it's not already in here, you just click on the little box here, it'll pop up, and then you can kind of move it wherever you want it to go. I'm just going to leave it where it is. Um, actually, you know what, I'm going to move that to the center of the screen. So whenever I'm flying, I can see it right in the center of my goggles and that's the first thing I see whenever I'm flying. So I don't have to like look around my goggles anywhere, look to the corner to try to find it. I can kind of just glance down, it's right there on the bottom of the center and I can just glance back up and keep flying. So keep that there and I'm going to save that. And that is everything for the drone for setup. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect it and now you can disconnect it from the computer. Okay, now that we have all of that set up, I'm going to double check everything. Um, so I'm gonna plug in a battery before I put props on. And it's always important to test your settings before you put the props on, because you don't really want to test with props on, especially when you're indoors sitting at your desk. Because um, your drone can sometimes, if your settings aren't right, can just kind of take off on you. So I'm not gonna put props on yet. I'm gonna plug in a battery and I'm just gonna double check everything. But I'm gonna take these little tags off of these motors now. I'm gonna like set them down right next to the motors so I can remember um, what motors they went on. But I'm just gonna take them off so whenever I arm the drone, they don't go flying. So I'm gonna plug a battery in. Drone's gonna turn on, connect my controller. 
All right, so I'm gonna test my arm. So I'm gonna go pre-arm with the right switch and motor is swimming. Motors are spinning, so that means that that worked. I'm gonna double check my beeper. Beeper is working. Um, and now I'm gonna test out my flip over after crash. Okay, flip over after crash is working as well. So everything is working properly. I can unplug it. And that means the drone is ready to go fly. Okay, now I'm gonna install the propellers. The drone does come with some of its own propellers, but I have a gem fan sponsor and I love their props. So I'm going to install their propellers on this drone instead. So you're gonna look at the little tags that came with it. They'll have little arrows pointing at them. And those are just gonna tell you which way the motors are gonna spin when you install the props. So you're gonna to wanna to look at your prop and make sure that the side that's angled up, so the side that um, is on the upward side is facing the direction the arrows are pointing um, because that's which direction you want the prop to spin to give your drone thrust to fly. So this one is angled up this way and it goes along with the arrow to where the prop is spinning that way. So I'm gonna attach it on the motor that way. And then this one is the opposite direction and it's gonna align with this red tag where the arrow is pointing out to the opposite direction. So I'm gonna attach it there, install this prop on this one and this one on this one. So I can get rid of these little tags that came on the drone. Now you're gonna find your prop nuts. So here's your prop nuts. You're gonna screw these on top of the propellers to screw them down and tighten them onto the drone. So just tighten those all the way down until they are nice and snug. It's tight. Now I'm gonna do the other three. Okay, all of the propellers are installed. Now I'm going to put a battery strap on it. So I have these battery straps that have um, rubber that kind of runs through them. So it just kind of helps grip the battery better. Um, but if you don't have any battery straps like this, the battery straps that came with it are great too. So you can thread that through the top plate um, so it's not kind of going through any electronics. It's the only thing between it and the battery is the top plate here. And then I'm going to put on a battery grip pad as well. So that's what this is here, this little rubber piece. So this will just add the layer of protection from the battery against the carbon fiber top plate. So that will just stick on the top. And that'll just help prevent the battery from slipping out. Okay, last thing to do is add a GoPro to it and then it will be ready to fly. So I've got my GoPro Hero 11 here pull out the bottom prongs, stick those on here. You can see there's a little spot here for the nut to go in. It's so gonna stick that in the side of the mount, and then I'm going to screw this bolt into that. There you go, GoPro is attached. And there you have it. This drone is now ready to go fly, so you can charge up batteries and go out and have your first flight with it. All right, that is all I have for you guys today. If you guys liked today's video, please drop a like, comment. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting a lot more FPV content and educational content to help you guys on your FPV journey. So yeah, I will see you guys next time with more FPV content.